Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. In today's video, I thought I'd give you guys a little update on my jungle aquascape aquarium. The aquascape is now 14 months old, and as you can see, the crypts have really taken over this aquascape. If you watched the last update on this aquascape, I did a massive trim of all the crypts, but since that trim, they've grown back pretty well. They've even started to get a little bit more bushier, which is nice as it fills in the space in the aquascape. So in this video, I'm going to be just doing my general maintenance and trim back the crypts a little bit. Usually about once a month, I do a big maintenance session on this tank. This is just to tidy up the aquascape, just to make sure it looks nice. As always, the first thing I'm going to do is move about a quarter of the water from the aquarium. Most people tend to do about 50% water change on their aquariums, but since I'm running a low energy aquascape, I don't really need to do this. In my aquarium, I don't get the nutrient buildup that you get in high energy aquariums. In a high energy setup, it's important to remove all the excess nutrients from the water so you don't get an algae spike. Water changes are always such a good way to help reduce an algae problem if you got it. The next thing I'm going to do is clean the glass. I found the easiest way to clean the glass in my aquarium was to use this razor blade scraper. It cuts straight through the algae really easily. I don't really need to put much effort into it. I have noticed that I'm starting to get a little bit of green spot algae growing on the glass now. I think this is due to a lack of phosphate in the aquarium. So what I think I might do is increase the fertilizer dose a little bit. I'll slowly increase the amount of fertilizer I'm going to be using every week until I get the correct doses so I don't cause any algae spikes. At the moment I'm dosing about 2 mils of the Tropic of Fertilized Nutrition. So for this week I might try 3 mils instead. The main plans are going to be trimmed today is the crypts. I usually do 2 passes when I'm trimming my crypts. The first trim pass is just to remove any dead or dying leaves. It's best to remove these leaves so that the plant doesn't waste its energy on them. Also, you don't want these dying leaves decaying into your water column. This could lead to a buildup in organic matter in your aquarium. This can then trigger an algae spike if you're not careful. And then for my second trim pass, I like to cut any larger crypt leaves in the aquarium. So say like for the cryptocurrency when to see our tropical in the middle of the aquarium, I like to cut the leaves that are overhanging towards the foreground. I want to make sure the foreground plants have enough light. For the cryptocurrency when TI green that's in the back left hand corner of the tank, I like to cut any leaves that reach the surface of the water. I think when they reach this height they kind of look a little bit too scraggly. I'm also going to be trimming some of the cryptocurrency balance eye in the back of the aquarium. I actually prefer to trim this plant when the water is filled back up. It gives me more of a sense of scale how the leaves are in the aquascape. And the last crypt I'm going to trim is the cryptocurrency when TI green gecko. It's kind of getting swallowed up by the Java ventrident in the back. And I think this is what's causing some of the leaves to melt off. I'll trim away any dead or dying leaves from this plant. Hopefully in a few weeks time new leaves will start to grow again. Next I'm going to be filling the tank up with fresh clean water. Always make sure your water is dechlorinated otherwise you might kill your fish. And you'll also end up killing all the beneficial bacteria in your filter. I like to make sure my water is at least room temperature before I add it to my aquarium. This is to minimise the risk of a temperature shock when I'm adding the new water in. And this will stop any unnecessary stress on the fish. Now that I filled the tank back up with water I noticed there were some crypts that were a bit too tall for the scape. So I decided to do a third pass of trimming just to neaten things up a little bit. Also with the tank full of water, I could see that the cryptocurrency balance eye was a bit too tall. This is a really fast growing cryptocurrency species, which is a bit odd as most crypts are known as slow growing plants. So what I'm going to do is just trim all the longer leaves off. I notice that as it grows, it drapes across the water. And this has been blocking out some of the light for the plants in the lower regions of the tank. So by trimming a few of the cryptocurrency balance eye leaves, I can get some more light to the bottom of the aquarium. This will just help overall plant growth. So that's it now, all the maintenance is done for this aquascape. I'm really happy with how little maintenance I need to do for this aquascape. I only trim the plants once a month now, and then that only takes about 10 minutes to do fully. With the water change and cleaning the glass, that only takes another 20 minutes. I never really kept the aquascape going for longer than a year before. Usually I'll get tired of seeing the same thing over and over again, so I rescape. But with this one, I'm really interested to see how it would develop. Pretty much 90% of the plants in this aquascape are slow growing. So by running the aquascape longer than usual, you can get some nice mature growth from the slower growing plants. You can really tell this with the jar of ventrident in the back right corner. It's pretty much tripled in size since I brought it, and now it's even starting to creep into the mid to foreground of the aquascape. I'm not really too sure how I can trim this to make it look a bit neater, so if you guys have any tips let me know in the comments below. Now with lockdown easing in the UK, I might take a trip to Aquarium Gardens. That shop's a real good source for aquascaping information. They really helped me out a lot when I was trying to design this aquascape. They gave me some great tips on hardscape placement, and they also gave some great suggestions on what plants to use in the aquascape. So hopefully when I visit there I can get some inspiration for a new scape in the future. I might even make a quick video about it too, let me know if you want to see it. Just before I end this video, I want to say a big thank you for all you guys who have been watching. I just want to let you know that 95% of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribed to my channel. So if you want to help the channel grow, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to see more aquascaping content.